May the words from my lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Have you ever been rejected? It hurts, doesn't it? There is no pain more familiar than the pain of rejection. We are reminded of those terrible young years when we were searching for our identity and acceptance by our peers was so important. The late Robin Williams, who was also an Episcopalian, <laughs> once told the story about his attempts to land a date when he was a teenager. He says, I was never very good at the romance thing. I remember we used to play spin the bottle. Remember spin the bottle? It was usually a Coke bottle. They spun really well because of their hourglass shape. A girl would spin the bottle, and if the bottle stopped on you, the girl could either kiss you or give you a quarter. Williams went on to say that by the time he was 15, he had enough quarters to buy his first car. <laughs> he also goes on to say that I remember my first date. I wanted to play it safe as many young people do. So I asked a rather plain girl out she mustn't have been an Episcopalian. After all, I didn't want her to say no. I get ready to kiss her goodnight and she took off her glasses and I was startled. Without your glasses, you're really beautiful. He said, without my glasses, you aren't too bad either. Rejection hurts, whether it being rejected by a friend, being the last one chosen for the ball team, or standing on the sidelines watching another person receive an award. Most of us know how it feels to be on the outside looking in at one time or another. Rejection hurts, sometimes it shatters Occasionally, it kills. So why is this subject important? Important to me this morning, because Jesus knew what it was like to be rejected. Just think about this, my friends. Misunderstood by his own family, cast out by his own townspeople, crucified by Rome, and particularly by the leaders of the religion in which he was nurtured. He knew what it was like to be on the outside, looking in. Our gospel lesson for today that Nancy read deals with this same subject, rejection. I want to look at the story for just a second as Jesus speaks to the chief priests and the Pharisees in contemporary terms. There was this landowner, you see, who owned the vineyard. And to protect it, he walled it off and built a watchtower so that it could be overseen. Then he rented the vineyard to some tenant farmers. And when it was time to harvest the grapes, he sent his servants that they might collect his share of the fruit. Wanting the entire harvest of themselves, these greedy tenants seized his servants beat one, killed another, and as we heard, stoned a third. Then he sent his son, thinking they would never harm his son. But when these greedy tenants saw the son, they decided to kill him too, and not only take the harvest, but take the vineyard. So they killed him. They killed him also. That was the ultimate act of rejection. 
which begs the question, how should we deal with rejection today? First of all, when we're rejected, we don't give up the fight. We don't drop out of the race and crawl under a rock to hide. We remember the words of St. Paul, who know what it was like to be rejected. We heard them in the reading from Philippians. Still, he wrote, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what's ahead, I press on to the goal to win the prize for which is God has called me heavenward. Press on. Press on. Now that's a good goal. It's so easy to allow this whole fear of rejection to defeat us, isn't it? But an important message for us is this to think about. What I encourage us to see today is that Jesus can help us when we feel rejected. Let me tell you a story about two young Mormon missionaries who also felt rejection when going door to door on their ministry journeys when they were 13. They knocked on the door of one of the women who was not happy to see them. Now I must confess to you, I admit, my Nina, not Nina, usually reminds me not to argue with them about faith traditions, and I confess I like to do it. <laughs> Just saying. The woman told them in no uncertain terms that she did not want to hear the message, and she slammed the door in their face. To her surprise, the door did not close, and in fact, it almost magically bounced open again. She tried again, this time really putting her back into it. But guess what? The door bounced open again. Convinced that one of the young men was sticking his foot in the door, she reared back for a third time. She was really going to teach him a lesson this time. But before she could slam the door closed, one of the boys stopped her and politely said, ma'am, before you do that again, I'd suggest you move your cat. <laughs> now, I also admit I am a cat lover as well. We have had many in our family. But I want you to know that Mother Nina has extra holy water in the back in case you wanted for a blessing this week. Isn't that true, Nina? Yeah. So whether you're seven or 75, or a mission and knocking on doors, whether it's by your peers or your own family, rejection hurts. But always remember, my friends, this. There is a man hanging on a tree who says to us, I saw so much possibility in you, I gave my life for you. In other words, if Jesus did not confront life's most heartbreaking difficulties and disappointments, how could he help you and I as we pass through the dark valleys of our lives? See, my friends, Jesus, is the wounded healer, no matter how we are wounded. Christian author Robert Morgan tells us something interesting about Michelangelo's magnificent statue of David. Many of you have probably seen it in Florence. It's in Florence and it's an enormous work of art. It was carved from a single block of marble 18 feet high. Perhaps you didn't know that Michelangelo wasn't the first person to attempt to craft that statue of David. An earlier artist named Augusto de Tonti selected that huge block of stone 40 years earlier and had begun sculpting the Old Testament king. But De Lucci gave up. He gave up when he discovered how difficult it was in fact, some stories say he was fired by Pope Pius II 
even though he had sculpted many other works of art. The piece of marble was rock hard and misshapen. I can't do nothing with it, he said, I'm just gonna walk away. But it was that same block of marble that Michelangelo used to create his masterpiece. He took a stone that had been rejected and with his superior skill carved the David that has thrilled us for more than 500 years. See, my friends, Christ was despised and rejected for our sake, for yours and for mine. And yet he was the very stone on which our faith traditions are built. There are some of us, whomever, the pain of rejection is all too familiar. Like you, I am one of those folks and I have felt that pain more than once. So this morning I say to you, hang in there, hang in there. There is a man with nail prints in his hands and feet who says that it really does matter that you keep going. And remember that no one come to you without leaving them happier or feeling better about themselves. Because there are many folks who need you to be their wounded healers, just as Christ ministered to us. And I remember what C.S. Lewis once said, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. Dream a new dream. Dream a new dream. That's really what it's about, isn't it? Amen.